you know, I have to tell you something. You know, to, to, to have some kind of experience here at the altar where the Holy Spirit comes on you and, and uh, you know, those could be excused as, as just, you know, I had a moment, you know, I was overcome a little bit, don't know what came over me. You, you could write those off, but written in the statement of faith of our church is that we believe that speaking in unintelligible syllables on a regular basis is a normative experience for every believer. You can't get much weirder than that. <laughs> God, why would you choose of all things? Why would you choose tongues? Well, if you think about it, the Bible says that your tongue is the most unruly member of your body. Guess what? Nothing else causes you more trouble than your tongue. It's a restless evil. It's full of poison, James says. And listen, set on fire by hell. No one can tame it without the help of the Holy Spirit. It makes perfect sense then. That if God has called us to be his spokesman, he has to replace the hell fire on our tongues with his holy fire. Before God could use Isaiah as his spokesman, his mouth had to be lit on fire. Do you remember Isaiah was undone in the presence of the Lord? He said, God, woe is me. I'm a man of unclean lips living among a perverse generation. And God took an altar from the coal and he touched it to Isaiah's mouth and he lit his mouth on fire with holy fire. And when we receive the Holy Spirit, He lights our mouth on fire too. He purifies our speech. He empties out the poison and He fills our mouth with extravagant praises. We speak praise to God and we speak things that are praiseworthy. Swearing and insults and criticism and put downs under the guise of humor and gossip and talebearing and deceit, all of those things go and they are replaced by words that give life. Coming up in Cleansing Stream. I'm teaching Cleansing Stream. You should come see me on Tuesday night at 7. If you want to get in, uh, this is the last week to get in because we're getting ready to go on a retreat. But one of my favorite sessions is coming up about speaking words of life. And we talk about how powerful are the seeds of words that we both give and we receive from people. The Holy Spirit enables us to speak extravagant praises and the Holy Spirit enables speech that crosses all barriers. The tongues of Pentecost crossed every kind of barrier. It crossed social barriers and economic barriers, ethnic barriers, cultural barriers, religious barriers. The Holy Spirit enabled that 120 to speak to people in their own language. And when the Holy Spirit lights your mouth on fire, he supernaturally enables you to speak others in their own language too. He enables you to speak to people in a manner that removes the walls and the barriers that would otherwise be there, the distance that would otherwise be there. Do you know, they said these guys are all Galileans. The Galileans were the hillbillies of Israel. If you'll forgive me, they were the West Virginia. They were the Arkansas, the Ozark Mountains of Israel. And Jerusalem was snobby, cosmopolitan New York City. These Galilean hillbillies were speaking to people who had lived abroad and had come home or people who had traveled from abroad. How many of you know that typically people who live abroad and people who travel abroad are the people that have the money and the education and the talent and the skill and the ability to do so. So there was a huge cultural and social difference between the people speaking and the people listening, but the Holy Spirit inspired speech, enabled them to cross that barrier and to touch the hearts of those city-dwelling snobs. 
Wouldn't you love God to light? Let's, let's pray. Hmm, let's do this. Let's pray. God sends a whole wave of people from uh, the Ozarks to, to the Upper East Side and the Upper West Side to speak spirit-inspired speech that just cuts people right through. You know what it says in Acts? It says they were cut through to the heart. It means they were humbled in heart. They were brought down a peg or two. Wouldn't you love to see that? Come on, let's go to, let's go to uh, the Upper West Side and let's begin prophesying in the name of Jesus and see a, a few people just lose their enlightenment. <laughs> the Holy Spirit enables you to use words and word pictures, illustrations, references that, that connect with people. He, he enables you to remember scriptures that speak to someone just in the right way in the moment. Maybe you've had that experience happen where you're sitting with somebody and you're talking about their life or you're talking about spiritual things and all of a sudden words start tumbling out of your mouth. All of a sudden you become an encouragement machine. All of a sudden you become a wise counsel machine. You become an uplifting motivational machine and you realize at some point that the words that are coming out of your mouth really aren't coming from you, that they're coming from the Lord. It's a prophetic utterance that is going forth to touch the heart. God is enabling you to speak. He, he even enables people to choose very specific words that cut right to someone's heart. I've had it happen to me, and I've used, been used in this by the Lord, where sometimes you'll speak words, and it echoes word for word something that is a whisper deep in someone's heart. And they know in that moment that the God of the universe has their number and heard the deepest, innermost whisperings of their heart. Read a story a while back ago of a man who owned a, a gas station and car wash together, and uh, he found the Lord and began a new journey with the Lord. He got lit on fire by the Holy Spirit and he had a marquee in front of his service station that he could change the letters and he was accustomed every few days to putting up pithy little sayings, things that would catch people's attention, make them smile and make them drive in, you know, buy lots of gas, wash their car. And so the Holy Spirit began giving him in his morning devotions, began giving him the words to put up on the marquee every day. And the first morning, the Lord gave him his sentence, and he said, well, Lord, he said, you know, it doesn't make sense to me, but hey, I'll just go with it. And he put it up on the marquee, and an hour or two later, a man came rolling into the gas pumps with his eyes just full of tears. He rolled down his window, and he said to him, those were the last words my father spoke to me before he passed away. He said, how did you know? And the man who owned the, the service station shared Jesus with him right there in his car. He got, uh, he got uh, filled, his heart got filled to overflowing with the presence of the Lord. He got filled up, his gas tank got filled up, he got filled up in his heart, and he drove away a born-again believer in Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit enables speech that crosses barriers, and the Holy Spirit enables speech that is prophetically convincing. I'm going to talk next week about Peter's sermon. It wasn't really a sermon. It was an extended prophetic utterance. It says in Acts 2.14 that Peter stood up and it says he uttered forth. Those are the same words in Acts 2.4 that says they uttered forth tongues. So this was not a sermon like I'm presenting to you. It wasn't points and notes and cute little PowerPoint presentations. It was an extended prophetic utterance that convinced people that Jesus is Lord. You see, the Jewish people believed that in Jesus' day, that prophecy had stopped with the completion of the Old Testament scriptures. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? And they believed that prophecy wouldn't start again until the Messiah came. And so this sign of spirit-inspired speech, both in the tongues, uh, the languages of men, and in this extended prophetic address, this sign of spirit-inspired speech was a sign that was convincing people that Jesus had indeed risen from the dead, that Jesus had indeed ascended to heaven, that Jesus had indeed been elevated to a throne at the right hand of God, and that Jesus was indeed Israel's King and Messiah and the Savior of the world. 
And the Holy Spirit will fill your mouth with prophetically convincing speech as well. As you speak, it's not the words of men, but it's the words of God that convict people and convince them to give their heart to Jesus and to receive eternal life. Three acts of believers who are on fire. Believers on fire, pray down more fire. Believers on fire, speak with holy fire. And finally this. Believers on fire, spread fire, and they draw fire. Believers on fire, spread fire, and they draw fire. Uncle Mike is here. One of our deacons, Mike Morris, is a Christian counselor, and he's a retired New York City firefighter. And I remember when I first met Michael years ago, I remember asking him one day, Mike, what would you do if your house was on fire? And I was expecting a heroic answer from him. I was expecting him to say I'd get blankets and I'd beat the fire out. I'd take the kitchen sprayer. I'd, I'd spray it out. I was expecting him to say at least I'd save the baby photos. But Uncle Mike is a fount of practical wisdom. And he looked at me and he said, if my house were on fire, I'd get out. Beloved, that's exactly what the 120 did. When the fire fell, they got out of the upper room. They went down into the streets. And then they went through the streets of Jerusalem to the temple where the crowds gathered around them. Beloved, listen to me and may God give you grace. Believers on fire don't stay in the four walls of the church. They go out of the house. They go out into the streets. They go out to where people are. They go out to where the broken are and the hurting are. They go out to where the wounded are. They go out to where people who are lost in sin and messed up and confused are. They go where people are gathered. The Greenwich outpouring was not, and it is not, an end in itself. God's purpose is not to keep His holy fire contained in the four walls of Harvest Time Church. His purpose is to light us on fire and then drive us out of the house to go spread His fire everywhere. I was talking to a brother just this weekend who convinced a bunch of his co-workers to come to some of the outpouring meetings over the summer. He told them they weren't believers, but he told them, he said, look, the glory of God is here. He said, don't argue with me. Don't ask questions. Just come. And they came. When it came time for ministry, they came down to the front. And then they fell down on the carpet under the glory of God. And they told him that they couldn't get up again for a long time because the weight of God's presence was so strong upon them. Beloved, you know, we're going to have some more services. We're going to have some more gatherings for the hungry. And if you can get your family to come and your friends to come, if you can get your co-workers to come, that's great. But if you can't get them to come, you take the fire to them. The Holy Spirit didn't stop working on the day after Pentecost and he hasn't stopped working here either. Ask your family member, ask your friend, ask your neighbor, your co-worker if you can lay your hands on them and pray and then watch what happens when the glory of God, the same thing you experience right here, falls down on them right where they are. Believers on fire spread fire. And they also draw fire. Very quickly, there were two reactions on the day of Pentecost. And there's two reactions that we face today when we're on fire. Some were amazed and some were amused. Some were amazed three times. It says they were bewildered, they were perplexed, they were utterly amazed. It awakened a holy curiosity inside of them. They said, what does this mean? What's going on here? It made them want to know more. It made them want to, to discover more. They followed them through the streets of Jerusalem. They followed them to the temple courts. Some were amazed, and it made them want more. Others were amused, 
and they just made fun. Ah, these guys are just drunk with wine. They don't know what they're doing. Beloved, can I tell you, 2,000 years have passed and the fire of God is still falling on His church and it's still bringing two reactions, some amazed and some amused. Do you know the wind and the fire and the Spirit-inspired speech, all three of them are signs that separate. They divide the wheat from the chaff. They separate the pure from the impure. They separate the earnest from the resistant, the, the, the hungry from those who are disinterested. And the signs will still separate today. Some will say yes, and some will say no thanks. But we spread the fire anyway. Believers on fire, they pray down more fire. They speak with holy fire. They spread fire and they draw fire. Let's stand on our feet right now and let's ask God, God, would you send the fire of the Holy Spirit to Harvest Time Church today? Come on, I want you to give the Lord a big praise in this place right now. Come on, let's give Him praise. Come on, let's give Him praise. Come on, let's give Him praise. Come on, lift up your voice. We love you, God. We worship you, Lord God. We magnify you, God. Come on, open up your mouth and let's give some extravagant praise. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Come on, lift up your hands. Come on, let's begin to pray. God, send the fire. God, send the fire. God send the fire. God send the fire. God send the fire. Come on, invite him right now. God send the fire to me. God send the fire to me. God send the fire to me. God right now, send the fire of the Holy Ghost. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Come any way you want to. Come Holy Spirit. Say whatever you want to say. right now just put your hand on your head right now if you would it's just symbolic just put your hand on your head fire of God I pray that you'd come right now and I pray that you'd rest on the head of every believer in this place fire of God I pray that you would come and transform us now by the renewing of our mind fire of God I pray that you would take captive every thought Lord that is contrary that exalts itself against the knowledge of Jesus Christ I pray that you'd take every thought captive and I pray that you'd bring it into subjection Lord I pray that you'd shackle it God I pray right now in Jesus name fire of God would just pass through I pray that an electrical current would pass through the neural connections the neural pathways the synapses of our mind and rewire in the name of Jesus I rebuke narcolepsy narcolepsy you get out and you go in Jesus name you can't stand here anymore. Jesus rebukes you. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for rewiring minds, Lord, around anxiety and depression, Lord God. Every thought of self-loathing, Lord. Father, everything that drives us to perfectionism and says we're not good enough. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for the fire of God right now resting on every head. Lord, I thank you for the fire of God bringing our thoughts into alignment with the thoughts of God. I thank you for the fire of God. Lord, remaking our minds right now. Come on, put your hand on your heart. Father, right now in Jesus' name, let the fire of God blaze in every heart. Oh God, become an all-consuming fire. I pray, oh God, that we would become keenly 
aware of the burning Shekinah presence of God inside of us. God, I pray, Lord, that something would erupt. I pray that something would break forth. I pray that something would ignite right now in Jesus' name. Oh God, I pray you'd purify our hearts. I pray, oh God, you'd take away a heart of stone and give us a heart of flesh. I pray, oh God, that you'd write in your spirit, Lord, the tables of the new covenant on our hearts, oh God. I pray you'd burn out everything impure, burn out every bit of idolatry, tree and unbelief, Lord God. Father, let our hearts blaze and God, light our hearts on fire to love with your love, oh God. Light our hearts on fire. Let the Holy Spirit lavish our heart, immerse our heart in the love of God right now in Jesus' name. Come on, lift up your hands to the Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray you'd light our hands on fire to do the works of Jesus. God, I pray that you'd anoint your servants for signs and wonders and miracles. Oh, God, I pray that you'd release your spirit. Oh, God, Father, I pray that you'd show yourself great and mighty and you'd anoint our hands with fire to do the works of Jesus. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray you'd anoint our hands for healing of the sick, Lord God. Father, for opening the eyes of the blind. Lord, for opening the ears of the deaf, for unleashing the tongues of the mute, oh, God. Father, Father, I pray you'd anoint our hands with fire to heal the lame, the crippled, Lord God. Those with every kind of bone condition, Lord, arthritic condition. Father, everyone twisted up by spirits of infirmity. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that you'd ignite our hands, Lord God, for healing miracles and signs and wonders, even greater than those. God, even for the raising up of the dead, Lord God. Father, as your word has declared, these signs shall accompany those who believe in my name. Come on, touch your mouth. Touch your mouth. God, right now in Jesus' name. God, touch our lips and light them with holy fire. God, I pray in Jesus' name that you take away the hell fire. And God, that you light our lips with holy fire. God, take away the poison and replace it with praises. God, extravagant praise. God, anoint our lips to speak inspired by the Holy Spirit, enabled by the Holy Spirit, empowered by the Holy Spirit. God, I pray that you'd light our lips on fire to speak as the oracles of God. Lord, indeed, let us cross social boundaries. Let us cross cultural boundaries. Lord, to the elite and the educated. Lord, to the underprivileged, God, I pray. Lord, that you'd anoint our lips to speak, God, in a way that removes all barriers and removes all distance. Lord, and causes us to cut through straight to men's hearts, to the humbling of their hearts. Father, in Jesus' name, Send the fire. Come on, church. Lift up your heads. Lift up your hands. Send the fire. 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 Father, send the fire. Father, send the fire. God, in this last great hour on the earth, God, in this last great day of harvest, Lord God, as, Lord, the, the human history, Lord, draws to a close, God, awaken your church. God, awaken us. God, send awakening to America. And God, let it begin right here. God, send awakening to America. And let it begin with us. You said, God, if we, your people, the ones called by your name, would humble ourselves and pray and repent for our sins, God, you didn't call the heathen to pray. You called us to pray. You didn't call the heathen to repent. You called us to repent from our wicked ways. So God, we, your people, we're lifting up our voices, God. We're humbling ourselves and we're calling out to you on behalf of our nation. Oh God, send awakening to America. Oh God, awaken your church to awaken our nation. Awaken your church to awaken our nation. God, from the north to the south, Holy Ghost revival. I pray righteousness would rain down from heaven. I pray, Lord, that 
the Holy Spirit would convict and convince man, oh God. God, have mercy yet on our country and heal our land. Send the fire. 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 In Jesus' name. Come on, praise Him. Come on, praise Him. Come on, praise Him. We praise You, O oh God. We praise You, O oh God.